Hello there, today we are looking at a new product by Skywatcher, it's the Skywatcher Heritage 150p truss rod miniature Dobsonia and it's hot off the press. This is the successor, well not the successor, it's a slightly bigger brother to the Heritage 130p and that was released back in 2009 I think and it was to celebrate 400 years since Galileo looked up at the sky using his refractor telescope. Curiously it's a Newtonian telescope invented by Sir Isaac Newton so I'm a bit surprised that when they did release that they didn't release a refractor which would have been possibly a bit more fitting. Nevertheless, it's been hugely popular and it's a, a very good scope for beginners. There's lots of five-star reviews out there. So this should follow suit, really. It's a slightly bigger version. So, red dot finder that on the side, ready, and there's the 10mm and 25mm super eyepieces. So what might be apparent looking at this is it's already pre-set up, there's not really any setup to do other than remove the bag and adjust the optical tube on its rail to get balance. It's kind of aimed for beginners and people that want something quick and easy to set up and easy to store. It's probably quite prudent of me to take some measurements and some weights really. So out the box we're looking at a total height of about 21 inches tall and it's about 14 inches wide. Because it's got a Vixen dovetail rail on it it'll be quite handy as a lightweight telescope to put on different mounts. Let's plonk this down and see what the optical tube weight is. 3.9 kilograms. This is the first truss rod telescope I've ever used, so that's the disclaimer. But that seems to work. Seems pretty sturdy considering it's just two bars. I think that's probably pretty nicely balanced. The focuser is the same as the previous 130p in that it's a very basic helical focuser that you simply screw in and out. You may have noticed that it's quite open so this second secondary mirror can get exposed to the elements and get dewed up in wet environments like the UK where I live. So what people have done with the 130 heritage is they've um, made like a, a shroud and you can have them so they fit inside the tube so when it collapses down it kind of slides into the tube so it's not something you've got to take on and off. I'm going to be doing a video where I go through some modifications to the focuser with some PTFE tape to make it to reduce the play in that because if you can see there you can hear it rattling and see it moving. Uh, if you wrap some PTFE tape around there it kind of makes it run a bit smoother and more true. I'll be doing a light shroud and one or two other little mods. One thing I should do is probably pop the red dot finder on. So to, ah, this is a bit different. I've not seen one quite like this before. So that must be the release tab for the battery. The battery must be in this little compartment there. Yeah, you can see it's a button battery inside there. And then it's just got like a screwdriver job to clamp it on somewhere. Where does that go? Because it's not immediately apparent. Hello? Oh, there we go, just there. So the stats between this and the previous 130p is, this is obviously a very slightly bigger brother. It's got 0.9 inches more aperture or 20 mil more aperture. Uh, the focal length is 100 mil longer, so you're going from 650 millimeters to 750 millimeters. I think the base is probably the same as the one for the 130p. Same helical focuser, but one big difference is that this has got a three spoke secondary support spider instead of the one spoke that the, the 130p has. So this is more likely to produce six diffraction spikes on bright objects like bright stars, um, 
compared to the couple that I produced with the 130p. So with the truss fully extended and the scope balanced, it is now 33 and a bit inches tall. The optics in this telescope are the tried and tested Explorer 150p optical uh, mirror set, which has been around for donkey's years and there's no problem with that at all. It's a really good mirror set. It's parabolic, which if you don't know what that means, it means that the cross-section of the mirror is not spherical. It's not a bulb, a spherical bulb, it's a parabola. So that means it, it brings all light that hits the mirror to a common precise focus. Now, a spherical mirror, which is cheaper and easier to produce, won't do that unless you've got a huge focal length so the light beam's nice and shallow. This is quite steep so it kind of misses unless it's a parabolic mirror. So the, pa the P for parabolic is quite important in a short optical instrument like this and that is what this has got and it's kind of like it's one tick in the box for the optical tro trolley, optical trolley, optical quality of the uh, telescope. We get a dust cap to put over the optics as well to protect them. Does it fit on there as well? Will it fit? Yeah, so we can collapse this down so it just slides in like that. And that will protect the whole thing from dust getting in getting into the optics and landing on the mirror. This is a collimatable telescope. Um, Skywatcher do more recently I've been doing telescopes for beginners that have had factory fixed primary mirrors so you don't need to worry about collimating. I would have thought that would have been a good idea on this as it's probably aimed at beginners as well as people who just want a second, third telescope. I mean, I've, I've never had any problems with the several factory fixed primary mirrors I've used recently. They've all been spot on out of the box and stay, stay collimated. But you, you never know if, if it did get jarred on a on a long bumpy journey somewhere. It's probably, it's, actually that might be the thinking behind it really. I mean, I don't know if Skywatcher were thinking, you know, this is gonna be taken out to dark sites because it's so portable, it's gonna get bumped about. In which case, it's probably a good idea that you can actually adjust the primary mirror on these. So yeah, I'm speculating, but yeah, that kind of makes sense in my head at least. As well as the primary mirror being collimatable, it has like three screws to adjust tilt the secondary, but I rarely have to adjust secondaries on Newtonians. The collimation, it's not difficult to do when you know how, and there's lots of tutorials out there on collimating. You can just do it on a star basically. If you defocus, if you look, put an eyepiece in there, focus on the star, and then defocus that star so it looks nice and big, you'll notice that the secondary obstruction will make a little hole in the defocus star and that should be bang centre in the middle and if it's not bang centre in the middle it's off to one side then your collimation's not right and then you just have to adjust these screws until you've got that little donut in the middle of the big ring and it's all nice and concentric. That looks a bit dodgy, ignore that. This has 33% more light gathering capability than the 130p as well so it's going to be slightly better for those fainter deep sky objects. It's going to have a little bit more resolution for like the moon and the planets to resolve that fine detail as well. And it will give you a slightly brighter image. Here in the UK this telescope set me back about £200. I think it's £199 plus shipping. So what could you expect from other telescopes in that price bracket? You can get a longer Dobsonian version of this called the 150p Skyliner which has got F8 optics. So it's got a much longer focal length. It only costs 20 pounds more. It's a solid tube, so you don't need to worry about um, building a light shroud to increase your contrast and to protect the secondary mirror from dewing up. And also because the it's F8, a longer tube, you've got a shallower curve on the parabolic mirror at the bottom, which is easier to figure more accurately. So the optics on the whole will be a very slightly higher quality, everything being equal. This you can stick in the cupboard, you can stick in the car dead easy, you can stick it in a passenger seat, stick it under the stairs. It's, it's tiny, it goes down really small, you can pick it up, it's got a handle to pick it up. You can probably pick it up with one arm, I'll give that a go. Yeah, you can pick it up with one arm just about. If you've got an outside table, you can just simply plop, plump this down. If you've got small children, they can stand up and 
get good access to the IPs with this on the ground. You know, I've got three kids, so I've got a bit of experience with kids and kids breaking things. I wouldn't be too worried about my kids sort of like moving this around too much, just with a bit of parental guidance. So this might be good for children, it's good for portability, taken on holiday, good for a beginner because it's got a good amount of aperture in a six inch mirror. The focal length is a good moderate focal length so it's good for wide views but you can use a Barlow lens to double triple the focal length to get zoomed in close to planets and the moon to look at craters or look at bands on Jupiter or try and resolve the core of globular clusters like the Great Hercules Cluster. If you've got the space and you, you want the slightly better quality optics go for the 150p Skyliner. If you want something portable then this would be an excellent choice. Okay, thanks for watching the initial thoughts about the an overview of the Skywatcher Heritage 150p. It's brand new out by Skywatcher, so there's probably not too many of the reviews out there for this at the moment. It's kind of why I wanted to buy it, I wanted to get in there quite quickly to show you guys around the telescope. Now, I will be doing more videos for this telescope. Usually I buy a telescope and I do several videos, quote through its paces, do a few little mods to it if necessary. Like with this one, I'll be doing a light shroud mod and the PTFE mod for the folks. So at the very least, maybe one or two other mods. Um, so I'll be recording those. So if you want to follow along with that, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you just get alerted to that video. So you can watch it when I've got that posted up ready to view. So if you want to do that, that'd be good. And um, I will see you hopefully on the next video. Just a quick amendment to the video. I just noticed after I finished recording that the dust cap for the focuser is also a collimation cap. You can see it's got like a little small hole, pinhole in the middle there, and then a reflective coating on the inside. So that's for helping you to align the mirrors as well as keeping the dust out of the, the optic. So that's a nice little touch. I thought I'd just sort of add that to the end of the video. Okay.